Welcome back to Getting Real with Rail Andrews and Alex Rubina right here on your hometown station, AM 1220. Don't forget to give us a call at 661-298-5487. That's 661-298-KHTS. You can also get your free AM 1220KHTS app and take us with you anywhere. We're having an amazing conversation right now, Alex. We were talking about, you know, we're talking about giving back and, and making a difference and all that, but you're talking about the importance of, you know, not giving too much of yourself yeah you know it's not a matter of not giving your, giving an, too much of yourself it's a matter of are you taking care of yourself as well because you are the source of whatever it is that you're giving you are the cause and you are the machine you are the the producer and and if you're going to produce and give and contribute you need to make sure that you're taking care of that everything is functioning if if you're off then how then what are you giving? You're giving away something that's, you know, not full or complete. So you, it's almost like um, if you're going to receive something from somebody, you want to receive it in a healthy way, correct? You don't want to receive something that's depleted or, or um, you know, half given. Um, you want to receive something that's full and complete. And so you want to think of giving from your overflow. You need to start taking care of yourself and you need to start giving, you need to start, you know, taking care of your own well-being. Um, you got to rest. You got to, you know, take care of your mental, emotional, spiritual well-being so that when you're giving, you're giving it, you know, fully to people. So when they say, I'll rest when I'm dead, you might be dead sooner than later if you keep up with that mentality? Yeah, you know, and, and I like using that, you know, analogy that I'll rest when I'm dead because what it does is it reminds me that um, that I can actually take on more. Like, I don't let my ego tell me, okay, you're tired. Um, I let my spirit tell me when I'm tired. Spirit always tells me, hey, dude, you know, it's time to shut it, shut it down. I'm going to shut us down. And then, you know, I'm watching a movie with my family and all of a sudden, boom, I'm out. But it's only because because I've, you know, given everything I got, you know, spiritually, but my mind, my ego is always telling me, hey, take it easy, take a nap or go, or you can do that later. It's always, you know, uh, telling me based on my feelings that I don't feel like doing that or let's do it tomorrow. It's always procrastinating. So I like, I like that concept when you say I'll rest, you know, when I'm dead, but not to the point where you're now you know, abusing yourself, where you now are falling asleep, you know, halfway, halfway, you know, during work, you can't really, you know, or you can't concentrate, that kind of stuff, you got to learn how to take care of yourself. Yeah, and I think the key right there is when people get to the point, you know, um, working with a coach like yourself, and they start to understand the difference between ego and spirit, because the ego is the one that's going to make you deplete yourself and stuff like that, you listen to the spirit, so I totally get that. You know, I, I want to jump uh, kind of back a little bit, Alex, because it's just hovering over your face like crazy, not letting me let go of it and you said something earlier when we first started the show about you know we were talking about these young ladies these champions in the wheelchairs and how people perceive them and and what, what came on my mind my mom said something to me once when my mom's been pretty ill most of her life and I never forget I was about 15 and and she said you know what you know what really sucks son I said what she goes I see you out there playing with your friends and I want to run out there and go play with you and I get up to go and my body stops me so I, my question is, the mind is so powerful that, but I'm wondering, these girls that, are, for example, let's use them, that are in this wheelchair, do they not see the, the, what we see? Do you know what I mean? Do they see themselves dancing? Do they see, they don't see themselves limited in a wheelchair, right? They see, do uh, you understand the question I'm asking? It, it, you know, it depends. You know, I think each one of those girls has their own belief system. They have their own mindset. They have their own worthiness. And um, they all have a different story about how they lost, you know, the ability to walk. And uh, if some of them, if it's fresh and brand new, and they were an athlete before that, they still have the mindset and they still have the vision. And probably at night, I've heard you know some people that don't have legs, they'll they'll wake up in the middle of the night and they'll be like, man, I was totally in my dream. I was running a marathon, you know. So it's it just depends. It's all situational. But I would love to believe that they all don't see themselves as handicapped. I think that it's those of us that are on the outside looking at them, you know, 
we we feel sorry for them and so we go the little extra mile and we start to you know visualize that they uh, don't have the capacity to do things that the normal person would and that's why we watch these videos and some some of the ones that have one leg and they're out there running marathons or or no legs and wheelchairs doing some incredible things we're going wow um, because I think it's it's in an error in our part where we're looking at them and seeing that wheelchair that's got limitations and and some of them are champions because they're they're defying the laws of what a champion looks like and they're just kind of creating some extraordinary results for themselves well i think a lot of it is people like yourself people like me who uh, you know speak life into people want them to believe because i can think of you know i think that i'm very very blessed because of the life that I've had, because of certain situations that I've been put in, i.e. when my brother was dying from cancer and I was running the Ironman. I remember my brother when we said, hey, I said, let's turn this into a positive. What should we do? He said, let's raise money for cancer. What specifically? He said, I want to raise money for all these little kids that are in the cancer wards that their parents dropped them off at two months, three months old and just can't deal with it. And I got to go in there and see these kids that maybe had two, three, four months to live, but they didn't know they were sick. They had big smiles on their face. They were excited. They, they saw they had a cold or something. You know, doing the Iron Man, another thing, like you just talked about. I got passed in the water, on the road on a bike, on the road running by people with one leg, no legs, blind people, one arm, just like, hey, see you at the finish line. So I've been around people that have really humbled me, but also helped me to say, I, I don't know, man, I think people, we talked about this, that maybe for the next inner circle, we need to take the group down to a cancer ward, down to something, because I think people live in a bubble. I think they just live in a bubble, which is sad because I think one of the things I talk about all the time we all got those little voice the spirit saying you know you're, you're stopping to get gas for example you know you've had it and he says hey just say hi to that person I don't got time I'm late for work I gotta go you don't when we talk about making a difference changing people's life it doesn't have to be raising 500 million dollars it doesn't have to be doing something big it could just be taking a moment to say hey Alex how are you today? How's your day? You know, being focused in that moment, not tapping on your iPhone and your cell phone, wondering what's going around. Just give that person that attention. You know, it reminds me of a, a, an incident. There was a young champion for Oregon, the Oregon football team, a beast. This guy was 6'8", huge, and I remember they were doing a story on him. And they asked him, what was the aha moment in his life? What was the game shifter? Because apparently he does all kind of amazing stuff, giving back like forever, more than anybody. And they said, what made you do that? And he said, when he was in high school, he said he had a really good friend of his that committed suicide. And, and, he, and he said, they were like, oh, and he said, well, here's what happened. He said, his friend that committed suicide, when they found him hanging, he hung himself, they found his suicide note. And the suicide note was dated and timed first thing in the morning. He killed himself at night. And he was this kid who wasn't very popular and all that. He said, if one person, one person says hi to me today, I won't take my life. So obviously this guy went through his whole life, whole day lonely. Nobody said, so he said that's why he every day says hi to everybody, big smile, how you doing, he goes out of his way. Just that can make a difference. Absolutely, and it does. And not, it's not that it can, it does. We are uh, all connected into one spirit. We're all we're all one. We're one energy, one God, one you know, universe. We're one powerful, loving energy, and we all get to live our lives with that spirit inside of us. And so, there's something very powerful. Um, about us that we're all deeply connected and so we need to share that with each other we need to remind each other of that and that's really the reason why we have relationships the purpose for relationship is for you to recognize your own greatness it's like um, if I want to experience my life as being a giver I need to be able to have people in my life to give to 
If I want to experience myself as a compassionate person, I need to have people in my life, in my relationships to feel sorry for, to, to have some sympathy for. So the, the purpose of relationships is to have people to bounce off who I get to be. There are opportunities for me to be loving, to be a great listener, to make a difference. And so if you want to experience more joy and passion in your life, you need to start focusing one, one on yourself, on healing yourself and growing. But while you're doing that in tandem, be helping other people people grow at the same time because you'll start to fill up your own bucket you'll fill up your own spirit and and you'll give your soul what your soul is yearning for which is to connect deeply with others and make that kind of a difference and so you know just walking around in a, an average day just your smile is so powerful just smiling at people um is is healing and it's it's uh your eyes even you just making eye contact with somebody with a little nod you know what's funny was before we started the show we were sitting here kind of waiting for the music to start and i looked over at you and i don't know if you recognize or, re or realize you did this but you winked at me did you know you did that mm -hmm. and so just you winking at me was a moment where i got to see that i that i matter you giving me a head nod or a wink is me being acknowledged that I exist, that I'm important, that you see me. And it's important for us to be seen in this world. And I think that's what people are yearning for. So when you have people in your life, whether they're your clients or even your own uh, sons or your daughters, uh, when you have people in your inner circle that are yearning for attention, and I know, you know, we've shared some of the, the laughs that we have with people around us that are attention seekers. All they're really doing is they want to they want to be acknowledged. They want to to know that they exist. They want to know that they matter. And so there's a, a malnutrition in their spirit, in their uh, in their being, in their in their essence of who they are. That they're yearning for attention. And so they do things outside of the norm to get that kind of attention. But you can give people attention in a healthy way where you you see them, you recognize them, or just a smile or not, or look at somebody just a few more seconds longer. You'll be surprised how many times you walk around in life and you're only really glancing at people. You're not really seeing them. But it would take a real conscious, present, in the moment type of experience. Are you living your life like that where you really recognize people and you really allow yourself to be with them for two or three seconds in that power? Powerful moment. Well, you know, you, you remind me, Alex, you remember a while back you gave me a, some homework and you said I couldn't talk for 24 hours. And it happened to be on Sunday when I, and it was my, my, my turn to usher. And you said, I told, well, I got to usher at the church. And you said, well, you gave me a little bit of an out. You said, well, if you need to be, you can let them know that you're doing this and or you can write something on a piece of paper. Well, you know, me always wanted to go to the next level. I said, I ain't going to let them know nothing. But I, I did kind of write on a paper, say I, I'm not able to. But here's what I learned really, really quickly. I didn't need to talk because I realized these people come in every day and they, they weren't even seeing me. And I was realizing that well, out of that homework, I was because I'm like, hey, how are you doing? Have a great day and stuff like that. But I wasn't saying nothing. And I was getting the same reaction from people. <laughs> it's like, so you're right. They don't notice. They just, they're so, it's like, what's his name? Was it Winston Churchill once? He, he, he got so fed up with people not paying attention to him when, you know, they used to come down the assembly line and, and shake his hand. He was just, I killed my wife today. I killed my wife today. And people were like, yeah, that's great. Nice, thanks. They weren't even listening to what he was saying. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and it's funny that you said that because it was almost about uh, within the last 30 days, we went to, me and my family went to a comedy a comedy show, and there was this uh, famous comedian, I'm not going to say his name, but he was up on stage in Hollywood, and he was talking about how how he's like, he goes, I have a pet peeve of people asking me how I'm doing. And he goes, or all the small talk. He goes, I don't, I don't want small talk. I want to just jump into like the real nitty gritty. He goes, and he just went on a whole tangent for about a half hour about small talk. And, and he had everybody just laughing. And I mean, it was hysterical, but I think that it was something that was people were identifying with. I think it was a kind of like this thing that we ignore. We just kind of go along with it. And he was just being blunt and honest saying let's let's stop doing this like it's a waste of time and uh and it just he, you know for a whole half hour he just put a spotlight on you know the being superficial as human beings and you know saying hey how you doing and not really being present in the moment we've learned all these little phrases that we use to kind of keep us 
um, guarded from other people. Happy New Year. Yeah, just little, just little things, you know, that we say that there are symbols for, I don't really want to get to know you or I'm afraid to get to know you in a deeper level. Um, and we just kind of blurt them out there. We don't realize that we're on automatic pilot. Most of the time, as unconscious as we are, we're on automatic pilot. A lot of what we say is already predetermined. We have this whole, um, like a little spiel. We're, we're almost like we're actors and actresses that have memorized these lines. When we go out into the world, we just kind of regurgitate them. We're not creating anything new, anything, you know, in the present moment, because, you know, most of us aren't at a higher level of consciousness that we can create something brand new in the moment. Well, you know, I, I think in, as I'm listening to you about, you know, the small talk and stuff, I know one of the things in, inside of my own house you know, I've been married for, uh, I'm going to get this right, because I know my wife may be listening, 15 years. <laughs> um, you know, but really, uh, somebody asked me the other day that I hadn't seen in a long time, said, so how's things going? How's your marriage? And I said, actually, finally, it's amazing. I mean, the last three, four weeks have been... <sighs> Sorry. Um, just awesome. You know, um, just, you know, moments like, you know, as a man, what, what I, you know, sorry, as a man, you know, we go to work, we want to work hard, we want to provide for our family, and I can remember so many times, I mean, just getting upset and frustrated, and because it was all about, I'm taking care of this family, and, and I'm providing, and you need to do this and, and that, and it's like, the other day my wife said to me, she said, she said, I, she said, you know, you're really becoming a great provider for our family. And it caught me back. And I, was, I thought, you know, I thought I've been providing all these years. And I said, what do you mean by that? Specifically, she goes, our kids are respecting you. They're listening to you. You listen to me. You pay attention when I talk. And so all this time I thought providing was, you know, just bringing home a dollars and cents. But providing can be just listening taking in people, you know, not small talk, you know, and I think, you know, and, and I've been through some different marriage things, you know, I ain't, I ain't knocking you out there, but I'm just here to tell you, <laughs> obviously with the change in my life, um, I, I don't know if that's really the formula that people need for their marriage. I think they need more coaches like you because it needs to be about being authentic and compassionate. And I'll never forget that drill we did one time with a total stranger. And I spent five minutes and I'm, I shared more with that stranger without saying a word, without nothing, in five minutes than I had in, you know, the 15 years with my wife. And I just just rocked my world and and I said I wanted more I said this isn't cool this is a lady I chose to spend the rest of my life with what was happening was you prior to meeting you you had been living a life uh, of unconsciousness you've been on automatic pilot and you've been having this program run you uh, your ego has been running you for so long everything was predetermined everything has um, a pair your paradigm already had it already wired the way it should look and but you weren't able to create the results you were looking for once I was able to plant some seeds and really kind of give you these moments where you can start to be a little bit more aware, you started to wake up from this unconscious nap that you've been taking. So you've been showing up more and more every day, a little bit more present, a little more in the moment. And so what you've been doing is raising your consciousness. And so um, you're starting to let go of that automatic pilot program that you've been operating from, which wasn't getting you the results that your heart's been desiring. Now that you're more present and more in the moment, you're able to navigate your life um, from from recreating yourself. You've been reinventing yourself, and I've been enjoying watching the process because you know I get I get the goodies just as much as you do by watching you know your face light up. Now when your wife walks in, and your face lights up. I'm not saying that I didn't I didn't see that before, but I didn't know you before. But to watch your face authentically light up when she walks in the room, um, and that that brings joy to me, and knowing that that you can only create that from a real conscious present place well you know and, and i thank you thank you for that and uh but you know I, I said to you the other day and i shared this with my wife we did a picture you know i took i've been taking her on uh my auditions with me and uh she's known i've been an actor ever since she knew me so we're going on 17 18 years now i've never ever took her on an audition with me ever 
And you were kind of shocked about that. You said, why? And I said, well, we've never been a team. I've never seen her as my team. But, you know, we're a team. And it was so cool because the other day we took a picture, you know, a selfie. And I looked at the picture and I said, I said to my wife, I said, that's what we used to look like when we first met. It's like we had lost years. We were happy. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I think all, cool. yeah, a lot of, a lot of families, a lot of couples, they, they start off, you know, in love with each other and in that new experience of, man, you know, I went from a me to a we, and that's how the money, the honeymoon starts off and we're really excited and it's fresh and it's, it's, in, it's invigorating and it's inspiring. And then all of a sudden we start to, you know, decide that uh, for whatever reason I got you start putting on all these these um, pressures on yourself I got to now provide and I got to do that and she's and then she finds her little thing that she needs to do and then you find your little niche of what you need to do and then you separate you you start to disconnect from each other and so um, you know now you get an opportunity to say hey we can still have our own game plan and still go out and I'm gonna still be the hunter and the gatherer and she's like I'm still gonna be the provider and the, and the healer for my for our kids and but we're we're going to do it together so let's reconnect and let's create a new game plan and that's what i'm excited about is you guys are you know have created a whole new team i think you even gave it a name what what would you yeah, call your team it's again? uh t team team Ra Ra ram rama team ram <laughs> team, yeah, so, so what you did was you combined your name with mm -hmm. her name yeah. and you combined it together and so that's what i think is so magical is that you can create a whole new experience a whole new future when you guys get together on the same page and you get focused Focus on what you're up to. Awesome. Yeah, this is, and I hate that you make me cry all the time, but I guess that's being authentic. It's good. So listen, guys, you're listening to Getting Real with Rail Andrews and Alex Rubina right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. We'll be right back in a second. Welcome back to Getting Real with a crying Rail Andrews <laughs> and Alex Rubina on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. Give us a call anytime at 661-298-5487 or 661-298-KHTS. HTS. And don't forget to download your free app and take us with you anywhere 24-7, 365. Not just me and Alex, but Alex's show. There's a lot of other great shows on KHTS, great programs. It's a great app to keep you informed. Alex, you know, I want to wrap this show up with, um, you know, obviously as I started sharing recently, I don't want anybody, I was thinking about this the other day, I don't want anybody to have to wait 14, 15 years. I don't want them to even have to wait a year to have to get to a place where I'm starting to get to, you know. So I know you've got an amazing event coming up, and, and I, I want people to know it's not just for married couples. You were telling me anybody could come. Well, the trainings I do, they're called transformational trainings, and they're designed to be experiential. Uh, so there's a lot of experiential exercises where you're having an experience. So there's something magical about having an experience in the training room where you're consciously aware of it and you're noticing it and then you're sharing it. As you're sharing it, you're having these aha moments. So it's, it's experiential learning, which is is way more powerful than the kind of learning where you're you're just reading information or it's didactic. So there's, a, there's a distinction there. And so the, those are the only kinds of trainings that I do. And what, what happens is the value of that is that you start to awaken from this unconscious nap that you've been having that you don't even realize is going on. Most of us don't realize that we're unconscious to a certain level because it's just all we know. It's like a fish that's been swimming in this dirty water. If it was born in that water, it doesn't know that it's dirty water. It just adapts to it. It's not until somebody pulls that fish out of the water and puts it into a clean pond that you start to go, oh my God, I can't believe that I've been swimming around in that dirty water. You can't see it until you actually have the experience and so the transformational trainings have been around probably for over 40 some 40 to 50 years but they haven't really even scratched the surface of the the level of of power and and the understanding that people can get to you have to be willing to really look at yourself and you have to have this deep desire to want to grow and become better and from my experience in the last 20 years um, it doesn't seem like it's very popular it's not popular to be in life it's not glamorous to be uh, knowledgeable, to be to, to discover the wisdom inside of you. It takes a lot of hard work and it takes a courage for you to really look at yourself. And so, yeah, I have a, a, a I'll do a training like every three months and I'll offer it to the community. 
The next one in February, uh, February 20th and 21st is called the Conscious Parent Training. And I've asked people, do you have to be a parent to be there? And I'm like, no, you don't. Because to be a part of it, we're going to be learning for those parents that are there, we're going to be learning how to be a more conscious parent. But nonetheless, just being a conscious human being will take you to a whole nother level you never thought was possible. And so, you know, you don't have to be a, con a parent to be in part of this training. But if you're a parent, you, you, you should be in it. You need to be in it. And the ones that are going to be are the ones that decide that, they, that there's something extraordinary out there waiting for them to create with their family members. And that they want it. They want a taste of it. They want to see what it's about. Or maybe you've been listening to the show and they're like, there's something about the show or the, about the way they speak that I want to, I want to peek into that. If, you want, if that's what you want, you need to show up. And that's basically what champions are about. Champions are the ones that see some value and then they just show up. It's awesome. And, you know, I'm going to, if, uh, if that went over some of your, your heads, let me, let me make it real and keep it simple for you. If you have a family... If you have somebody you want to spend time with, if you're planning on getting married, if you're planning on having kids, if you want to have a great life, not an ordinary life, if you want to have fun, if you want to laugh and do all those great things that we're supposed to be, you need to get in the train. That's it. Yeah, there's a distinction between having a good life, a great life, and experiencing an extraordinary, extraordinary life. life. Extraordinary living mm -hmm. doesn't just fall out of the sky. You don't create extraordinary experiences. You don't create deep, meaningful, powerful moments with your loved ones um, just by happenstance. It just doesn't just happen. You have to be consciously creating those kinds of experiences. And, and the way you do that is to do some work on yourself. There's some things that are getting in the way that you can't see. And in the training room, they come up and they come up big and you're able to go, oh my God, now I can see what's been getting in my way. Um, and, and you'll get people that walk out of that training room and they're, they're high. They're, there is a natural high. They're high on life. They're high on this possibility that I can now see where before I wasn't able to see what's, what's obviously right in front of me now. Yeah, it, it, it's just powerful. I, I just highly recommend it. I know we're going to be in it. My kids are going to be in it, uh, the other ones. We yeah, I actually have, an I have another team training that okay. that came about um, by a leader in this community. His name is, uh, is Arif Hallaby, and he also has a show here uh, on KHGS. And he stepped up and said, I want you to create another one. We're going to, because we just did one about a month ago, because I want to do another one for the community and I'll sponsor it. And so if you if you have teenagers that want to learn how to, to discover their, their uh, authentic self, their personal power, have them reach out to me and we'll get them going. Uh, absolutely. You can get in touch with Alex at alexurbina.com. You can get in touch with me at joincoachrael.com. We really appreciate you. We thank you for stopping by. You're listening to Getting Real with Rael Andrews and Alex Rubina right here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.